the air in the Hell Creek Formation 66 million years ago is a physical presence. It is thick with suffocating heat and a fine, gritty dust that coats every surface. A relentless sun beats down from a white hot sky, punishing a landscape already on its knees. A drought lasting months, perhaps years, has been a slow, merciless executioner. The once lush floodplains fed by vibrant rivers are now skeletal landscapes of deeply fractured mud. The cracks wide enough to swallow a man's arm. The withered remains of cycads and ferns crunch underfoot their life, giving moisture long since surrendered to the arid air. The scent of decay hangs heavy, a morbid perfume of sun, baked vegetation, and the unseen casualties of this great thirst. Life, what remains of it, has contracted, pulled by an invisible, desperate thread toward the valley's final shrinking water bowl. And here, at the edge of this muddy, algae, choked pool, a silent drama of immense consequence is unfolding. On one side stands a creature that is the very embodiment of predatory perfection, a full-grown Tyrannosaurus rex. It is nine tons of bone, muscle, and instinct, a hunter whose massive head is a testament to its brutal lifestyle. There are signs of the draught upon it. Its hide is caked in dust, and a subtle gauntness hints at lean times. But its gaze is unwavering, its renowned binocular vision fixed with an analytical intensity. Its flared nostrils sift the stagnant air, processing a million years of predatory knowledge. This is a hunter at the peak of its evolutionary design, a specialist whose entire being is engineered to tackle the largest and most dangerous prey. Facing it, a living bastion, a fortress of flesh and bone and adult triceratops, Weighing close to 12 tons, it is a formidable wall of armored hide and sheer power, its own body showing the strain of the dry season. Its massive head is held low. Its three magnificent horns, each over a meter long, sheathed in razor, sharp keratin, are pointed directly at the source of the threat. These are not ornamental, they are lethal weapons honed by countless generations of combat. Behind them, a solid shield of bone. Its frill provides a near, impenetrable defense for the vulnerable neck. This animal is the culmination of a parallel evolutionary journey, a creature built specifically to withstand the very predator it now confronts. The tension is a palpable force, an invisible line drawn in the dust between them. This is not a chance encounter, it is an appointment with fate, orchestrated by the failing environment. The shallow, murky water behind the Triceratops is all that remains for miles. It is not enough to sustain both of these giants. The stakes are therefore absolute. For one, this valley will be a tomb. For the other, a few more days of life. The air is still, but the silence is heavy with the promise of violence. In this brutal, parched world, survival is not a guarantee. It is a prize awarded only to the victor in the battle for the last water bowl. The confrontation does not erupt into immediate, chaotic violence. In a world where a single misstep or a grievous injury can lead to a slow, agonizing death from infection or starvation, energy is a currency more precious than water. What unfolds first is a complex and crucial ritual, a tactical negotiation where raw power is displayed but conserved. This is the threat display, a psychological war before the physical one. The Tyrannosaurus makes the first move, a calculated act of intimidation. It draws itself up to its full, terrifying height, a six meter tall monolith of predatory intent. Inflating its massive chest, it unleashes a deafening, low-frequency roar. This is no simple cry, it's a sound felt as much as it is heard, a bone-jarring vibration that ripples through the ground. 
designed to bypass foliage and travel for miles, a clear broadcast of dominance. It then follows this auditory assault with a visual one. It turns its head slightly, presenting the terrifying profile of its jaw, opening its mouth wide to reveal its arsenal of teeth. Banana-sized daggers engineered not for slicing, but for puncturing armor and shattering bone. The sheer potential force of its bite, the strongest of any terrestrial animal that has ever lived, is put on full display. The message is simple and unambiguous. I am the apex predator here. This water is mine. Retreat or be annihilated. The Triceratops does not flinch. It is an animal that has faced this specific threat its entire adult life. It answers not with sound but with an unyielding posture of defiance. It stomps its powerful, pillar-like front legs, digging its toes deep into the dry earth, anchoring itself. It shifts its immense weight forward, transforming itself from a grazer into an immovable object. Its frill, a shield of solid bone, may have flushed with blood, the patterns upon it becoming a vibrant, intimidating billboard advertising its strength and vitality. The three horns lower, aiming with the deadly precision of a trained lancer. Its posture communicates an equally clear message. I am a fortress. I will not be moved. Advance and you will be impaled. Fossil evidence of Tyrannosaurus bones with healed puncture, wounds from Triceratops, horns, tells us this is no idle threat. When posturing fails to break the stalemate, the probing phase begins. This is not yet the main battle, but a series of careful, calculated tests, a high-stakes reconnaissance mission. The T-Rex lunges forward in a faint, a sudden, explosive burst of surprising speed, stopping just short of the horn's lethal leap. It's testing the Triceratops' reaction time, its agility, how quickly can the 12-ton herbivore reposition its massive body to keep its weapons pointed at the threat? The Triceratops holds its ground, pivoting with an unexpected smoothness, keeping its deadly arsenal locked on the predator's chest. It then responds in kind with a short, aggressive charge of its own, a two-meter surge of power that forces the T Rex to take a hasty, undignified step back. Each is gathering critical data, analyzing the other's speed, balance, and tactical preferences, searching relentlessly for a weakness and exploitable flaw. Then, the true battle erupts. The Tyrannosaurus commits to a full assault, charging in with a ground-shaking velocity that seems impossible for an animal of its size. Its strategy is direct and brutal. Use its momentum to get past the horns and deliver a crushing, definitive bite to the vulnerable flank or neck. But the Triceratops is an expert defender. It meets the charge head on, its low center of gravity and immense bulk absorbing the kinetic energy of the impact. The sound is a sickening, wet thud of nine tons of predator colliding with 12 tons of armored prey. We see the incredible power of the herbivore's neck and shoulder muscles as it shoves back, the T-Rex staggering to maintain its bipedal footing. The predator's primary weapons, its catastrophic jaws, are effectively neutralized as long as the Triceratops can keep the fight in front of it. Fossil records showing healed bite marks on Triceratops frills and skulls prove that these head on confrontations happened and that the Triceratops could not only survive them but win them. The fight descends into a brutal, exhausting dance of offense and defense. The T wrecks quicker on its feet begins to circle, constantly trying to outmaneuver its opponent and create a flanking opportunity. The Triceratops, in response, becomes a living turret, its powerful legs driving it in a tight circle, its horns always locked on target, 
Clouds of choking dust are kicked up by their movements, partially obscuring the combatants in a swirling vortex of grit. The sounds are primordial the strain, guttural breaths of two titanic engines of muscle, the sickening thud of flesh and bone colliding, and the scrape of horns against tough, reptilian hide. The predator snaps its jaws, hoping for a lucky strike on a leg or tail, but the Triceratops is too well defended, its movements economical and precise. It seizes a momentary advantage, pushing forward again, driving the T-Rex back, its long brow horns scything through the air, missing the predator's leg by mere inches. For what feels like an eternity, the battle is a perfect, violent deadlock. It is the irresistible force against the immovable object, raw, explosive power against impregnable, patient defense. But the Tyrannosaurus is not just a brute. It is an intelligent, experienced predator. And through this relentless cycle of attack, counter, and maneuver, it has been observing, processing, learning. It has begun to identify a subtle, but potentially fatal, weakness in its opponent's defense. While the Triceratops is masterful at pivoting to face a threat, the sheer physics of moving its massive body means there is a fractional delay. Split, second of vulnerability, as it transfers its immense weight from one side to the other to counter the predator's relentless circle. Biomechanical studies of these two giants suggest that while Tyrannosaurus was a surprisingly agile turner for its size, its massive prey was not. This is the moment the predator has been waiting for, the culmination of its tactical analysis. It feints hard to its left, a convincing, powerful lunge that draws the Triceratops into a predictable, committed pivot to counter it. But instead of continuing the circle, the T-Rex does something extraordinary. It plants its massive left foot, digging its claws into the earth, and uses its powerful leg and tail muscles as a spring to execute an incredibly agile, explosive turn in the opposite direction. It's a maneuver of astonishing speed, power, and precision for a creature of its colossal scale. The move catches the Triceratops completely off guard, mid pivot. For one critical, fatal second, its head and its horns are pointing where the T-Rex was, leaving its entire right flank catastrophically exposed. This is the opening the predator has spent all its energy to create. The Tyrannosaurus lunges forward, finally bypassing the deadly horns. Its jaws, capable of exerting over 12,000 pounds of crushing force, clamp down on the Triceratops' shoulder. The sound is a horrific, sickening crunch of breaking bone and tearing flesh that echoes across the silent valley. The razor, sharp teeth, driven by the most powerful jaw muscles of any land animal, don't just cut, they pulverize, engineered by evolution to shatter the skeletons of its prey. A bellow of pure agony tears from the Triceratops, the devastating bite has shattered its shoulder blade and severed the critical muscles that support its front leg. The leg buckles, its primary defensive stance, the very foundation of its strategy, now utterly compromised. The turning point has been reached and passed. The tactical mind and athletic prowess of the hunter have finally overcome the raw, defensive power of the fortress. The fight is over. The crushing bone, shattering bite has crippled the Triceratops, its formidable defense rendered useless. The fire of aggression in its eyes is extinguished, replaced by the dull glaze of shock and excruciating pain. Slowly, laboriously, the great herbivore turns, its body now a liability, and begins to limp away from the waterhole. It is a retreat of the defeated, 
a death march where each step is an agonizing effort. The Tyrannosaurus watches it go, its chest having in great, ragged gasps. There is no triumphant roar, no pursuit. There is only the profound exhaustion of a creature that has pushed itself to the absolute limit of its endurance. It has won. The last of the water is now its prize and it. the chance to survive another day in this unforgiving landscape as the victor finally stumbles toward the water's edge to drink. The true, brutal cost of this victory becomes apparent. This was no easy kill. Deep, bleeding gouges run along its flank and thigh where the Triceratops' horns found their mark during the swirling melee. One horn tore a long, ragged gash in its lower leg, a wound that will ache for weeks and presents a dangerous invitation to infection. The energy expended in the relentless, Playstakes battle was immense, a caloric debt that will need to be repaid soon. Winning in the late Cretaceous is not a clean, glorious affair. Victory is paid for in blood, energy, and flesh. Every wound is a liability, a weakness that a rival predator or a future prey animal could exploit. For the Tyrannosaurus, survival has been earned at great physical cost. Here at this desolate, silent waterhole, we have witnessed the fundamental law of nature in its most brutal and honest form. In a world of finite resources, competition is absolute and unforgiving. The core message of this encounter is etched into the very bones of these animals. Survival is not a right. It is fought for. It is earned through strength, intelligence, and sometimes sheer luck. It is often seized directly at the expense of another's life. This brutal battle was not born of malice or cruelty, but of stark necessity. The draught created a pressure cooker a desperate arena that forced two of the mightiest creatures to ever walk the earth into a fatal confrontation. One leaves with its life, the other stumbles toward its death. If the prey were larger, would the outcome have been different? Perhaps? But a more profound question lingers in the stifling air. If the draught had not been so severe, would this confrontation have been avoided entirely? In the profound quiet that follows, as the Tyrannosaurus finally quenches its desperate thirst, we are left to reflect. The Earth gives and the Earth takes away. For these magnificent, terrible animals, locked in an ancient evolutionary arms race, the line between life and death is as thin and as fleeting as the last drops of water in this disappearing pool.